Hey everyone, Sly47 here. I get asked the question often, how do you play World of Warship Blitz on PC? So today I'm gonna show you how to do it, mm, tell you exactly why you shouldn't, show you other software I use and kind of give you a behind the scenes look per se of the channel. Hopefully you all enjoy it. Let's get into it. So now welcome to my desktop. Now it looks like a mess right now, but I actually have two monitors and so you can actually see everything that I have here. I shoved it all on one screen. Normally I've got my browser and my music down below with just having Discord, the game, and Streamlabs open in order to actually do the streaming or video capture or anything else that I need realistically. And then down below, I would also have a little bit of a sticky note to try to keep track of all the ships that are being requested or that I should play. Now, from what we can tell here, you're actually seeing a different view slightly because you're actually starting to see the QE, you know, basically all of my button shorts on blue stack so this is exactly how I play and when I'm streaming I turn them off so you actually can't see them so the recording doesn't capture them but that's exactly there and I will have that up on discord so anyone can download it and have it so it's pretty easy to set up I don't do the skills in the bottom area because of course that changes depending on how many skills you have or don't have so yeah that's pretty much it but blue stacks is how I play and when I actually attach my mouse using f1 I can shoot and do everything that I need to do on a keyboard by moving around, switching guns, switching shell types, and everything of the sort. That's exactly how I play on BlueStacks. But reason why you might not want to use BlueStacks. So you'll occasionally like kind of hear me kind of pissed off because you use your mouse to move around and look at things. Occasionally that will just become completely detached. That just completely detached. I'll I'll literally be turning, 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 and all of a sudden it just will detach. I just won't have any control. And in a brawl, that's killed me more than I want to admit and more than I want to deal with. Secondly, you have an issue where it actually will not register the turn at all in your ship. So literally, you'll have to double tap and make sure that that is registering and turning your ship for you. It just happens at random times. It's it's just wonderful. So if you do still want to play like this, I will have the config up there. And also, let's jump into exactly how you want to install it and then more. So, how to install BlueStacks onto your PC, it's actually quite simple, just download it. It, it. it takes care of everything. It used to be a bit more of a pain, but nowadays it's not that hard. There is only one minor thing that if your computer can do it, I would suggest enabling virtualization. I'll have a link here in how to exactly do it and go through it. It increases the performance because of course it means that the VM that BlueStacks is runs on the hardware, runs a little bit better instead of just running on top of Windows, it runs kind of more with Windows per se, you know, kind of layman's term. I know it's not the exact same VM experts I am. <laughs> not a VM expert, but it helps. So if you can do head down to your BIOS, enable it, or you might even already have it enabled already to go through. Now, once you actually have it, you actually do need to download the Play Store, get the Play Store, log in, have Google spam you most likely dozens of times in order to tell you, hey, I, I actually, I am myself. Don't worry about it. Don't freak out. And then download World of Warships Blitz. From there, I would highly suggest, these are the kind of settings I use. I use as much CPU allocation as I can, memory allocation as I can, performance mode, high performance. Match the frame rate with your screen. Don't, you know, don't try to overload it. it. It doesn't do much for it. Or don't try to, you know, lower it. I feel it just works better if it's matching your frame rate on your display of course in a display you want to go as high as 1440p make this thing look as good as it can but you can lower it if it's chugging on your system a little bit and add on top of it you're probably gonna be streaming only out to you know 720p anyways so you could go down all the way down to 720 or 1080 you know whatever whatever floats your boat on there after that, pixel density, make it high. That always helps. Graphics, I go performance and OpenGL. I found DirectX just crashes more often, and OpenGL is Android's way of handling things, so might as well make it the same way. Also, prefer dedicated GPU if you have a dedicated GPU in your system. Uh, other than that, it's it's pretty much up to you on settings. Uh, I found the OnePlus 3T works the best. Don't know why, but the other ones didn't really do that well outside of that yeah it's it's pretty simple and just blue stacks so once you got that you have it downloaded you can jump into game and you know download the config that i uploaded onto discord so grab that 
Once you've actually downloaded that config, you're actually just going to go over to the game controls right here, open advanced editor and import it, and then make sure you switch over to the default edited. Sorry, I know it's not that special of a name, but that's just, it's better than default, right? But either way, once you have that, you can set that, you'll save it, and boom, done, you are off to the races, and you can now play World of Warships Blitz on PC through Bluestacks. So let's get on to streaming and recording exactly how I do everything. When I'm streaming, I will be using music most likely from this playlist right here. I'll have the link, of course, in the description down below. If you want to use this as well, you can. I'm going to be continually adding more and more to it. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I'd like to know just all non-copyright music. That way it's pretty easy going. Now, music and streaming, unfortunately, is a bit of a mess and sound is also another thing you'll notice so many times that I'll adjust people's voices and do this all, all other stuff. That's why if you are streaming on Windows, there's an awesome uh, thing called Ear Trumpet. I will try to make sure that link is also in the description down below. This is a great little resource of being able to turn everything up and down exactly how you want it. And I typically turn down YouTube music right here that down to basically nothing because even on its quietest setting it is loud on stream so i had to make sure and adjust it even further to make sure that the music's not blowing everyone's eardrums out next up of course we've got blue stacks but the main thing right here for communication is discord you can do everything here this is my discord and of course the link is in the link tree down below if you want to join up on that I'll be streaming most likely in my streaming hub. Pigbay's got one and we have an extra one. It seems like we might even be able to make a few more of those for people because people are really starting to get into that. And then of course we have Streamlabs, the main key thing right here. I use Streamlabs. You can use OBS, which is a free open source version. Streamlabs does has a free version if you're not planning on multi-streaming. If you do plan on multi-streaming, I find Streamlabs to be more user-friendly, but I will be switching out of Streamlabs eventually for OBS and Restream by the end of the year so that I don't have to pay Streamlabs money and I can just put it towards more towards the open source community. But this is exactly what I what I see. You know, I see a little multi-stream area. I see all the, the chat right there. I see mic audio, desktop audio everything that goes on and as you can see all of my different scenes from this and of course my stylings uh of the mini feed and all that such so this is exactly what i see when i'm streaming and normally i would just have the game up front have chat to the right of it so i can see it right there music and of course the browser down below watching everything and discord on the other side so i can see who's talking but that's how i stream now, how do I exactly record things, edit things, everything like that? I actually use Streamlabs again. You can use OBS as and or Streamlabs as a recording software. You can do everything that you need from there, create scenes, maneuver around. Like, of course, I could just be like, pop over to starting. Boom, done. It looks like I'm, I'm starting to stream or, hey, look, we're ending the stream now. Switch over there. Simple as that. So once you go back to this, and I record it, I can then go over to what well, I use is Shotcut. I know I probably should be using Premiere and a few other things. I know some people are that way, but Shotcut's free. It's really easy to use. It's, it looks a little complex off the bat. I will say that. But once you start getting used to it, it allows for a lot and it helps with everything. I can make regular video shorts through this. Just it makes it so easy. So that's just what I use. Let me know what you use or let me know what you're thinking about using. I previously was using Windows Video Editor prior to this, which of course is total garbage from what I know now, but it does work. It does. And I just find this is a little bit better to clip everything up and edit everything. So that's exactly how that works. And finally, this last section is for the aspiring creators, the people who are wanting to create videos for World of Warships Blitz or any other game, really. This just applies for so much. But be consistent. That's one of my biggest things that I tell almost anyone being like, oh, how did you, know, you get so big? How did you do this? I'm like, I streamed for months on end to zero people. I watched my videos get 10 to 12 views for easily six, seven months. I remember being super excited because my video broke 25 views. <laughs> we all start somewhere. And the key thing is to use the YouTube algorithm to your advantage. It wants to have consistent videos that it can have consistent ads on for a consistent community. If you work with it, well, it works for you as well. So 
try to find a video schedule that you can upload. I know for me right now, I can do about five videos a week and keep things going. Of course, I schedule videos out potentially even weeks in advance, and that's exactly how I can make this all work as a hobby and not get overwhelmed by it. But off the bat, upload consistently once or twice a week, whatever you can do. Start getting a catalog of, of video behind that so you can go, okay, hey, I don't really have anything, but let me let me check in the in the reserves, see if I've got anything right there so you can slap it up there. After that, it's all about making your entire stream and your entire brand an experience and trying to get a format. A lot of people will notice my videos, I do an intro, I show the clips, and I have an outro. It's an incredibly simple format. If you keep it simple stupid, then it's not so stressful and bogs you down. Like try to not have this kill your life and make sure you still have it and that you can relax and you're not stressed over it because the moment you're stressed over it, you're not having fun. Viewers know you're not having fun and it just shuts down the entire thing. Everyone just, it's not, it's not enjoyable. So you gotta enjoy what you do. So make sure it works around your schedule and then also make sure that you have a format that really works well and is simple. It's not too crazy, but it looks semi-professional and it does take time to build up. You can probably go back a year or two and you'll notice I had an old format. Eh, it wasn't, eh, no, it's <laughs> looking back. I'm like glad I moved away from it, but now I'm already looking forward into the future of how can I improve it past that and how can I make it even better? So it's always about improving, but also not about burning yourself out. So as small creators, I highly suggest that have consistency, work on a format that works for your life, because of course, None of us are really making money off of this, especially from the main areas that we actually stream. It's all going to be some side things like Patreon or Venmo or anything else that you can do. I hope this helps you on your on your journey of becoming a YouTube creator or anything like that. I know it's not exactly the craziest ideas, but the problem is everyone starts somewhere. And depending on exactly how you want to take your channel versus where I'm taking my channel, might be completely different vectors. So remember what works for me won't always work for you, but whatever works for you might not always work for me. Figure out what you need to do to create a schedule, stay consistent, and also make sure you don't burn yourself out or your community. They know, they watch, they see it. They, they probably know before you even know. They're very intuitive. And then of course, one final thing is I know I'm probably going to be doing the, this exact thing with this video is I'm going to be watching it and I'm going to be critiquing it. I'm going to say this is my best work. I'm just going to scrap it and do all that. Like, breathe. You are your own harshest critic. Okay. Breathe. Sometimes put some stuff out. People will tell you if they're like, hey, this wasn't your best work. Sometimes they say it nicely. <laughs> sometimes they don't. But either way, just sometimes try. Failure is not a problem because in this industry it's one video out of many videos you could create and every single time you fail you learn something not to do next time and your community will help you out especially if you advance and grow yourself over time because they'll see that change so leverage your community leverage other creators we you know i know many creators will swap around send videos early that are unlisted to other creators to go like hey what do you think it's okay i know i've done that plenty of times because once again, my harshest critic, I can't, I look at some things and I'm just like, this is just bad, but to other people, it's actually great work. So, you know, just sometimes release some things and let it fail. Failure's not a problem. And I believe that's it. Other than uh, software that I'll eventually move back to once I actually get a phone that can handle it and not be kind of lighting itself on fire whenever I use it or stream from it. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Uh, yeah, that's this is pretty much what I do and what a, kind of my format's going to be like. Added in a few extra things for aspiring creators. Hopefully this answered all of your questions. And if I didn't answer a specific one or you want more information on it, of course, comment down below or talk to me on Discord over there. Definitely would love to help out anyone who's wanting to help stream or start creating content for this community. Because, of course, once again, this is a collaboration, cooperation, not a competition. If you liked this video or like the content on this channel, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, 
hit that notification bell to get notifications whenever new content goes live. If you want to help support this channel even further, Patreon link, of course, is down below in the link tree down there. It's just $1 to $5 and you get early access to videos. And on top of that, if you haven't joined up on Discord, definitely would suggest joining up there. It's an awesome community to join. We have so many people on there and it just continues on growing. So if you want to be a part of that, definitely would suggest that. Else, have a wonderful day. Hopefully this helped. Peace. Thank you.